Happy New Year! I've decided to lead a healthy lifestyle this 2022. So to start off, I've done some jungle trekking. Now, as I walked along these trees, I realized that although these trees appear quiet and calm, they are actually busy. The leaves, for instance, are busy carrying out photosynthesis. The stems are busy supporting the whole plant, while the roots that are hidden underground are busy transporting water. So in today's episode of BioWorld, I'm going to discuss the role of specialized plant cells. So come join me. According to the STPM syllabus, we need to know the structure, function and distribution of specific plant cells. Plant cells can be categorized as unspecialized plant cells, which involve the meristematic cells and specialized plant cells. There are altogether three tissues that fall under the specialized plant cell category, which are epidermal tissues, ground tissues, and vascular tissues. Let me start by giving you an idea of how an unspecialized cell becomes specialized. Unspecialized plant cells are meristematic, meaning that they can carry out cell division. So when plant cells carry out mitosis, they multiply in number. Some of the unspecialized plant cells will begin to change structure. We call this as cell differentiation. After these cells have taken on a different structure, they start to have new functions. We call this as cell specialization. For example, the dermal tissues will contain cells with structure different from the meristematic cell. And based on that structure, the dermal tissue will carry out specific functions. So in this way, we also have cell differentiation and cell specialization, which will form ground tissues as well as vascular tissues. I will now start with the structure of the meristematic cells. As you can see, the cells are small and the bluish color shows us that it has compact cytoplasm. To discuss the internal structures of this cell, let me enlarge one meristematic cell and we find that it will have a large central nucleus. Since the cytoplasm is compact, there will be no vacuoles. However, if vacuoles are present, they will be very small vacuoles. Next, we look at the arrangement of the meristematic cells. As you can see, they are all very closely packed together and the cell walls of the meristematic cells are very thin, made up of the basic cellulose, hemicellulose and pectin. Okay, we are done with the structure of meristematic cells. Let's move on to the distribution and function of these cells. Altogether, there are three types of meristematic tissues. The first one is the apical meristem, which is distributed at the shoot tip and the root tip. In the microscope images, you can see the structure of the cells at the shoot tip and here at the root tip are small, typical of meristematic cells. Now the function of the apical meristem is for the primary growth of the plant. Primary growth includes the elongation of the shoot so that it can grow towards sunlight and elongation of the root so that it can grow towards a water source. If you have been observant of the microscope image of the shoot tip, you would notice that there are another two positions here that look similar to the apical meristem. These two meristems 
are the second meristematic tissue known as the intercalary meristem. These meristems are located at the nodes of plants and are necessary to enable elongation of the shoot in between the nodes. Let's now have a look at the cross section of the stem. Here you will find the third type of meristematic tissue known as the lateral meristem. There are two types of lateral meristem. In the center here you have the vascular cambiums while at the periphery here you have the cock cambium. Together these cells enable secondary growth in the plant. This involves increase in diameter of the root as well as the stem. In this enlarged image of the stem cross section, tiny circles are visible. These circles are the vascular bundle. The vascular bundle contains xylem and phloem and sandwiched in between the xylem and the phloem is the vascular cambium. Since the vascular cambium is a meristematic tissue, it is able to do mitosis to produce secondary phloem and secondary xylem. These secondary tissues are necessary to help increase transport and support for a bigger plant. Here is the second type of lateral meristem known as the cock cambium. The cock cambium only forms when the epidermis of the plant is damaged. The cock cambium is meristematic, so it will start to do mitosis to form a new layer called the periderm, which will replace the broken epidermis. That concludes our discussion on the unspecialized meristematic cells. Let's move on next to specialized cells. This time, I'll start off with the distribution of the three specialized tissues. First, let's take the leaf. If we view the cross section of the leaf, you will find that all three types of specialized cells are present. Starting off with the dermal tissues. You will find the dermal tissues at the upper epidermis and lower epidermis and this includes the guard cells too. Then in between the two epidermis layers, you will have the vascular bundle that will contain the vascular tissues. The balance of the cells here, which include the spongy mesophils and the palisade mesophils, make up the ground tissues. Next, we look at the cross-section of the stem. The dermal tissues are distributed in the epidermis. And here, you can see a ring of vascular bundle, which contain the vascular tissues. And the center here is known as the pith and the surrounding area is known as the cortex that contains the ground tissues. Finally, we look at the cross section of the root. Similar to the stem, the dermal tissues are found in the outermost layer that is the epidermis. However, the vascular bundle is not arranged as a circle. Instead, it is at the center of the root where you will find the vascular tissues and the rest of the cells that make up the cortex will be made up of ground tissues. Now that we know the distribution of all three specialized plant cells, let's focus on the cells that make up the epidermal tissue. When talking about epidermal cells or epidermal tissues, there are actually two types. The type you find in young plants and the type you find in old trees. The layer in the young plants is called the epidermis and the layer found in trees are called 
carry the miss. We shall be discussing both. We will first have a look at the general structure of the epidermis. The epidermis is made up of elongated and flattened cells that have a large vacuole. The cytoplasm is fluid and transparent while the cells are arranged closely together. There are some special type of epidermis cells that have special structures. Although epidermis can be found on the leaf, stem, root, flowers, fruits, there are some epidermis with special structures. For example, the epidermis on leaves are able to secrete a wax called cutin which forms a cuticle layer on the leaf. This makes the leaf waterproof. In the roots, epidermis can form hair-like extensions which we call the root hair to help increase rate of water absorption. Added to that, the leaf also have special epidermis cells called the guard cells that make up the stomata. And these guard cells have chloroplasts that enable them to do photosynthesis. As mentioned earlier, plants undergo secondary growth to become trees. So, the soft epidermis will be replaced with the hard peridermis layer. Here is a microscope image of the peridermis layer where you find the peridermis is made up of two tissues. The outer layer is made up of dead cells called the cork cells while the border here is made up of living cells known as the cork cambium. The cork cells are dead cells because their cell walls are added with suberin while the cork cambium is the lateral meristem that will carry out mitosis to produce new cork cells. Most of the cork cells are tightly packed together but there are spaces where they are loosely arranged which we call the lenticel. So in this diagram here, these spaces that are visible are actually the lenticels. Let us now discuss the function of the epidermis. Since the cells in the epidermis are closely arranged, they are able to protect the plant from physical injury as well as infection. This is made possible because insects, virus and bacteria find it very difficult to pass through this tight layer. Besides that, the cells have a large vacuole suitable for nutrient storage. Epidermis found on the leaves are able to form this cuticle layer which also protects the plant from dehydration by reducing the rate of transpiration. There is a special type of epidermis cell found on the leaves known as the guard cells. The guard cells make up the stomata which mainly functions for gas exchange in the plant and at the same time controls the rate of transpiration. Besides that, the presence of the chloroplasts in the guard cells enable photosynthesis to occur. Finally, in the root, epidermis cells are able to form root hair that helps to increase the rate of water and mineral uptake. Now we look at the function of the peridermis. The main function is to protect the plant. The dead cork cells are able to protect the plant from dehydration, physical injury as well as infection. Here at the lenticel where the cork cells are loosely arranged, the process of gas exchange as well as transpiration can occur. To sum up, in today's video, we completed discussing unspecialized meristematic cells we also discussed the distribution of specialized plant cells and we discussed the structure and function of the epidermal tissues. So in my next video, we'll talk about ground tissues and vascular tissues. Until then, bye-bye.